Hello, this is Breuer, and welcome back to another episode of our Let's Play for Farming Simulator 22 as we continue our Swiss chocolate run here. And apologize for it being a little bit dark. Uh, it's not super late, but it is late enough that we are getting the shadows from the mountains. So I'll try to hurry up and get through the rest of this day and go from there. I did finish up all the contracts that we had. Uh, I actually went a bit above and beyond and finished up basically every contract I could find, although I just see that there's a new one here now. But every other contract got finished. In fact, we made $54,972 in contract income, plus we got an extra 12,000 liters of sugar beets in our silo now. Um, so yeah, I kind of went a little crazy, like I said. Uh, another thing is that I did add, uh, if you've watched any of my other series, you would have heard me talk about this already. But as of this time, I think this is my first episode for the Swiss map since they released the Precision Farming DLC. And I went ahead and went around to all my farms and added 50,000 bucks to the money just because the first crops that we get with the, the, the you know, after that DLC launched are going to be a little bit less, as well as the fact that we don't have the bonuses from having our um, precision farming score maxed out. Uh, we get a score for doing things like getting the pH balance right, getting the fertilizing right, getting the uh, uh, scanning the fields to begin with. Um, and so we, we're not getting that bonus right now. So combination of things, uh, plus the equipment to get some of the uh, precision farming equipment is a bit expensive. Uh, and so I decided to, instead of obviously restarting an entire brand new save uh, with taking that precision farming stuff into account, I decided to just add a little bit of money to each of these saves to make sure that we can continue them uh, with that in place. Because I definitely wanted to have that turned on because I really like the precision farming stuff. Um, and uh, that was the direction I went. So anyway... Uh, we finished all those contracts, like I said. We are working on uh, one right now, but we'll come back to that here shortly. But first things first, we do need to get us some more food for our cows. And I think we have to get unload some, uh, some milk here in a minute. Which we will do momentarily. Oh, and unload some cheese, I think, as well. Because I think our cheese is actually about capped out. Alright, there's our straw. I'm going to turn on the lights. It's just, <laughs> it's just a little bit dark. And maybe just because it's darker for me with uh, lights from the camera shining in my face. But overall, it is kind of dark. Can we get both of these? Yes. Now, we don't have that many fields, obviously, on this map. This map is primarily the cows and just these couple of small fields. So, it's I mean, in that sense, the precision farming will probably have a little bit less of an impact. But I still have yet... To, oh, no, no, I don't... I have not yet to determine. I was going to say, I have yet to determine if we get a bonus for the precision farming bonus for produce crops, or for produce uh, materials, I should say, such as the cheese. But I know, actually, that that is, in fact, what happens. We do get a bonus as we get our precision farming score up because on one of my saves on the uh, tribute run, I have recently sold a bunch of clothes and I definitely got, uh, I think it was only about 3% bonus at that point in time because I just didn't have the precision farming score that high. Uh, it can go all the way up to 15% increase, which is insane. Um, so we definitely get a bonus on our produced materials. Uh, it's not just crops. So we definitely want to get, even on the small fields, we want to, we want to max out our precision farming score as much as we possibly can to get those bonuses where, where possible. So to that end, we will definitely want to get our fields scanned here momentarily. So let me get this done and then we'll come back and we'll scan these fields. Won't take that long to scan them again since they're that pretty small. All right, good stuff. Uh, I guess I could drop left this somewhere. I'm gonna drop this off just right here for right now. 
I think that's enough for the cows. Yeah, they're going to be fine for a bit. I mean, I could do another one, but I kind of want to get some of these other things done real quick. I can always do some more later. All right, that's done. And we need to get a trailer for the milk. We've got like 15,000 liters. Um, so we will actually need to make a couple trips, won't we? Yeah, that's which is fine. We'll just rent. Uh, we don't have one rented right now, do we? I'm not crazy, am I? No, we don't. Okay. Nothing's popped up here that we can grab. Unfortunately, no. So we'll just grab the one from here. Drop the milk off. Load up the cheese. Do the scans. And probably by then we'll at least get one of those contracts finished. I might not wait around for both of them to get finished. I just grab the two cultivating ones we had there. Um... But I don't really care to wait around for both of them to get completely finished necessarily. Sure took us a long time to finish up the uh, sugar beets one. Someday we'll buy one of these trailers, but um, without knowing quite what the impact of the uh, precision farm is going to have on this map, I don't want to touch that yet. Um, I oh by the way, there is a new free DLC. Um, well, update I guess maybe maybe up, upgrade maybe or something like that. I don't however you want to call it. It's technically an update to some mods, but. It's also kind of an upgrade to those mods. And that what that is, is that it used to be that the only sprayer that did the sensing of the uh, weeds was the John Deere one here on the end. They have since made it where these two Cavernland ones can also sense. So if I come into here, uh, we can do weed spotting on both these. So it's the same price. Yeah, this one's called Sea and Spray. This one's called Weed Spot Spraying. So... I'm assuming that's because, if you can see the trademark, Sea and Spray is trademarked to John Deere. Um, so the, the Cavernland ones just appear to be generic. But gives you gives you a couple other options. Um, I mean, this one, you might as well just get the John Deere one, I feel like, at that point, unless you just really like Cavernland stuff. But this one is obviously going to be quite a bit cheaper. So other options, which is good. Never been a huge fan of having only one option to do things. This is part of the reason why I'm... I hate the fact that it's still to this day only two machines but the same manufacturer that can do lime. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. Just going to drive all over this guy's freshly cultivated field. I'm sure he won't mind. Get my tractor repaired up a bit. I just refilled it with gas recently, but did not repair it yet. We were actually getting a little bit low on milk, weren't we? I think. Yeah, pretty low. This will take care of it for quite a while. If I unload you, will you let me? <laughs> it's just falling off. I don't know why the cheese, like, I mean, I, I did it pretty fast there, to be fair. I, mean, I can try it one more time real slow. But the fact that it drops it from really high for some reason, most of the other things don't do that.
Yeah, see, there we go. Suddenly it messed up. Ah, but we did get a pretty full load on there, though. Um, cheese. I haven't actually checked the score for cheese, have I? Or the price, I should say. I have that little thing turned on where it tells me, you know, where we're, we're close or not, but I haven't really checked to see. Because obviously, when I log right back into the game, it's not going to. Well, I guess it does tell me right as I first logged in, but I don't think I was paying attention, to be fair. Uh, so it's October right now. Uh, we got a couple more months for barley. We got a couple more months for oats. Let's check those real quick. Uh, sunflowers. Uh, sunflowers could be pretty close. It is close ish. But theoretically, February is the better price, or March maybe. Uh, corn. Looks like it would be June, so we're a ways away from that. Uh, sugar beets, we're not going to sell. Milk, we're not going to sell. Straw, we're not going to sell. And that's everything except for the cheese. Okay, so let's check the cheese real quick. Cheese would be January. So we're in October. January would be 1937. So we're, we're still a bit off from that. Um, how how bad is the production right now? So we did empty out quite a bit now. So we're we're good. In fact, what I could do is... You know, drop some of this off way back here somewhere and then come back and pick it up later. We'll just keep an eye on it. It'll be okay for now. It's got some space. Oh, I just was not paying attention to the fact that... I mean, I saw it at 100%, but I was not thinking about the fact that... Probably should come over here and uh, tell you to stop working. Is 17 the one that you actually have attached because of the equipment? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to cancel this one then. Don't really need to do that. But we will collect for this one. There we go. 90,000 bucks. Not too bad. Um, we actually have a little bit of money still in here too. So 20,000. So we're about $110,000. I do still need to, let's go get another load of milk. And then I need to do the scanning on the fields. Which will be our first precision farming activity. Possible once we sell that load of cheese, we might be in a good enough money spot to uh, to make another investment of sorts, such as maybe get the sugar mill. We'll have to see. Although I don't really have a place to put it. Uh, that's kind of the big big thing I've been talking about a few times here, right? That, yeah, I could put the sugar mill down. I could put the silage pit down. I said, keep saying pit. <laughs> silage bunker down. But um, we, don't, we don't really have a place to put it right now. I mean, I suppose I could really cut back on my field to just cut down to that one smaller field. Um... might actually be okay because by the time we need more of that type of crop might by then maybe we would have the money to buy what we want but i don't know i think i just need to buy a bigger field and then use some of that for uh for crops and then some of it for uh placing placeables So at 3600 a month, this will last me, what, seven months, something like that? Not too bad. This rail is coming through here. I'm driving through a, through a park. I should probably turn around and come back this way. 
Let's get out to the store and grab the uh, scanner device, which if you've not done the precision farming before, uh, the device you need is, what I'm looking for, over here in miscellaneous. There's a couple devices here. Um, you have this Assyria Proactive. This is something you can attach to the front of your tractor if you want to do um, nitrogen sensing. Uh, you can also add one of these types of devices to your tractor. Now, this one will work day or night. The one on your tractor only works during the day, if I understand it correctly. So, But this is the one you want to do use first. This is the first thing you need to use to scan your fields to see kind of what type of fields you have, what type of soil, uh, the different levels of nitrogen and pH and things like that. So we'll show, I mean, if you've seen my other playthroughs, obviously you've already seen this, but in case this is the only one you watch, then I'll try to go through it a little bit here briefly. Like I said, it will not take us long to do our fields, so. All right, once I unfold this, as, or I'm starting to unfold it, you can see this little circle on the on the map now. That circle tells us what size of a scan we're going to be able to do. Can we do... I think we can do this in fours. So then we come over here and we uh, take a soil sample, and it drops a little thing down. If you actually really zoom in, you can see that it's actually putting the soil into like a little cup down there um but for the purposes of what we have to do it's all automatic now you can even see it's uh it's obviously a circle well circle with kind of more of a flat edge is just because of the way they draw the graphic but um effectively a circle but it will overlap onto other fields as well in fact if we come up here we'll get a little bit of overlap on our field up there Oh, the other thing I didn't show you guys yet was kind of where our score sits now. So if we come in here, there's a new menu option uh, for this little satellite here. It tells you what your environmental score is. Right now we're at a 49. We're actually lower than we would want to be. Um, if I hit the Y here, since we've only got one field, this represents that one field. But normally this this, the, this big square down there would represent all of your fields combined, what your score is. And then each individual field, you would see this little square that you can hover over and see their individual kind of scores. But again, we've only got one field, so this is all combined total for us in this case. But right now we're at a 50. I guess we brought it back up slightly. But as we finish the soil sampling, you can see we're at a 7.3 on the soil sampling. That will go up here momentarily once we've actually send these samples in to get uh, to actually get scanned. Costs a little bit of money. I think 100, 150 bucks, something like that per per soil sample, something like that. It's, it may be a little bit less. I can't remember. We'll check here in a second. It's not that much, don't, to be fair. Now, if you had a massive, massive field, I suppose it could add up to a couple thousand bucks, but none of my playthroughs do I have any like massive fields. Interestingly enough, the first time I ever used Precision Farming was on this map back in 19, because that's when this map launched. It launched uh, with the Precision Farming stuff. Or the Precision Farming came out shortly after, and it launched, you know, it was, it was kind of in line with this. But yeah. Um, okay, so we got eight samples. So we will now send the samples in for analysis. We'll see how much that costs. I think it's, I don't remember. We'll see here in a second. I keep guess, trying to guess, and I'm like, why, why guess? We'll wait and see. Takes a couple minutes. Uh, we should be able to turn this device back in now because we don't need it for anything else. 
Although I suppose if we're going to look at some prices of some fields real quick before I 100% decide what I'm going to do with my money. Might be worth holding onto this. I don't think any of the neighboring fields if we could buy for 110 though. I think they're a little bit more than that. All right, so there we go. 1200 bucks, eight samples. What is that? 150 bucks a piece. Um, so as you can see, now we can see our, our field makeup, right? Ma vast majority of this field up here is sandy loam with just a tiny bit of loam up there in the top corner. Vast majority of this is loamy sand uh, with a little bit of sandy loam in the top right corner. So, and, and if we were to scan the rest of these fields, you could see that these patterns kind of continue on through them. Um, now, this, the, the type of soil will di dictate, you know, how much pH, you know, what the pH balance needs to be, what the uh, nitrogen balance needs to be. And some for some crops, most of the grain crops, things like that, it'll actually determine what the seed rate needs to be. So it all can fluctuate based on the type of soil. Uh, we can also see the pH right now. Um, it should, the pH, if it's, prop, if, it's, if it's where it needs to be, should actually match the patterns here. As you can see, if we look at the pH, there's a little bit of a, it's not quite matching up here at the top. So uh, we probably need to add pH across the board. Uh, that would be the lime. Here's the nitrogen. Um, this would be the fertilizer. Uh, and then we could see the yield at some point in time, but that's not going to show up right this second. Um, but anyway, that's that's the first step. And then you kind of go from there. We can kind of get into that as we progress. Uh, we will need to get the little device attached to our tractor. In fact, that's gonna that's gonna bump our price up. Let me just let me just remind myself what the prices of the fields are, because I, I I'm pretty confident that we cannot afford anything, but I want to make sure I remember for sure. Um, 137 bucks there, 137,000 I should say, and 92,000 there. And we could buy one of these down here, I suppose, and put some stuff off to the side. Wouldn't it be the worst idea? But yeah, none of these, none of these are really close. Can we, can we get, really the only one we can afford is 21. And that effectively uses all of our money. Uh, and then we would have no money to put anything else down. So I think we've got to wait a little bit longer. I hate, hate saying that, but oh, it's quite, I haven't noticed the expected yield or expected uh, yield potential up there based on the type of soil it is. I guess some soil is just better. Yeah, okay, that's cool. Um, I mean, it makes sense. I just, I had noticed that before. I, this is my fourth playthrough that I've finally gone through the precision farming stuff, and that's the first time I've actually noticed that. But of course, none of my other playthroughs have I gotten ready to buy any fields yet. So we're gonna go drop this off. We're gonna upgrade our tractor, and we gotta repair it anyway. And get its little uh, device attached so we can do the fertilizing when it comes up. And that'll be it for now. I think we can call that an episode, right? Well, pretty close to it. I guess I gotta drop this off way back where. All right, so first things first, let's repair you. And then let's customize you. We do wanna make sure you can also do narrow tires, which you can, because once we get crop down in order to do the uh, fertilizing, we will want to have narrow tires so we don't destroy our crop while we're fertilizing. Um, we have the best energy we do. So it says Isaria Pro Compact is what we want to add, which is 14,000 bucks. I mean, obviously at some point we'd love to add the GPS, but that's another 15,000 bucks as well. So we'll just add this thing for now. And it actually looks the same. Um, right? No, it doesn't. I thought it usually the GPS added a little white box up there too. But no, the Pro Compact adds a little white box and then it has little devices on the mirrors. But we need it. So in order to fertilize properly. So we'll grab that. So we'll use up a little bit of our money, but it is what it is. We had, like I said, we added that 50,000 bucks to cover expenses like that. Let's turn in this device. Turn, uh, we turn you. We're gonna keep the mower because we still got some mowing to do next month. I think that's it for this episode. Just some pretty good stuff, made some good progress. Let me pay off some of the loan. No wrong button. So we got about 85,000 bucks of the loan paid off to be able to pull back out and use again at some point. Um, yeah, we just really need to get another field so we can add, we gotta have more space for buildings. We'll get there though. 
Once we sell all that cheese, we've got a lot of cheese sitting over there, right? So once we sell that cheese, then we'll be in a pretty good spot. And like I said, the first thing we really need to do is just get this. We got to get the sugar mill. We got to get that sugar started processing. Even if all we do is sell the sugar as is right now. Because I can't remember what else we need for the chocolate. But, um... Does it tell us in... Eh, we'll look, we'll look at it later. I, I can't remember. I, I, milk, obviously, and sugar. But I can't remember if there's something else that we need to add into it. Alright, well, I do appreciate you guys watching. May God bless you. And I hope you join me again next time. Thank you, and goodbye. I wanted to give a special shout out to the following channel members. Thank you so much for supporting the channel.